Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be walking you through how I run a chi-square test for independence with my graphical calculator, the TI Inspire CX. And the setup here is that I'm starting from a contingency table, that's the one you can see here, and I'm interested in finding out whether personality styles and artistic preference are independent or associated. And so, looking at the contingency table here, we can see at the top of each of these columns the different personality styles, and we can see on the far left of each of the rows the different artistic preferences. So let's get started. When running a chi-square test for independence, the first thing we should always do is state the null hypothesis as well as the alternative hypothesis. And so I'll just write a little 1 here as in step 1, and I'll go ahead and write a capital H sub 0 for the null hypothesis. Now as I just said, here we're interested in determining whether the two categorical variables personality styles and artistic preference, are independent or associated. And when doing a chi-square test for independence, our initial assumption, and therefore our null hypothesis, will always be that the two categorical variables we have are independent. So in this case, our null hypothesis will be that personality styles and artistic preference are independent. And so I can quickly write that the null hypothesis is that personality styles and artistic preference are independent. And to be clear, the categorical variables that we're studying here are personality styles and artistic preference. Our alternative hypothesis, therefore, which I write with a capital H sub 1, is that our two categorical variables are not independent, in which case we'll usually say that the two variables are associated. So in this case that would mean that personality styles and artistic preference personality styles, and artistic preference, are associated. Which essentially means that there's some connection or link between those two variables. Ok, now that this is taken care of, we can move on to step 2, in which we'll use our calculator to compute or calculate the chi-squared statistic. And so on my calculator here you can see that I'm on the home page, and the first thing I'll do is open up a new scratch pad. So I go ahead and click on that. Now in order to compute the chi-squared statistic, I need to start by entering this contingency table in my calculator. And to do that we're going to need to define a matrix. And for that I go ahead and click on menu, followed by the seventh option matrix and vector, followed by the very first option create, followed by the first option matrix. My calculator now asks me for the number of rows as well as the number of columns, and looking at our contingency table here, we can see that we have 1, 2, 3 rows, and 1, 2, 3 columns. So I enter 3 for the number of rows, and 3 for the number of columns. And I go ahead and click on OK. And all I have to do now is enter each of these observed frequencies in my calculator. So let's see, we have 12, 8, 3, 6, 4, 10, and 2, 6, 9. Now careful, don't go and click enter just yet. We need to store this matrix in our calculator's memory. And so for that I just exit the matrix, and I'm going to click on store. And store is what's written in blue directly above the var button on our calculator. And so to access it we click on control, followed by the var button, and we can see this little arrow here, and then we'll give our matrix a name. And because this contingency table contains the observed frequencies, I usually call this matrix OBS for observed. And now I click on enter. And now that that's done, we can safely say that we've stored this contingency table in our calculator. And so we're ready to calculate the chi-squared statistic. And so for that I go ahead and click on menu again, followed by the sixth option statistics, followed by the seventh option stat tests, and you can see way down at the eighth option here, chi-squared two-way test, and so I click on that. The calculator then asks me for the observed matrix, and so I click on this drop-down menu, and you can see the only matrix that I've stored is OBS, which corresponds to our contingency table, and so I select OBS. Once that's done, I click on OK. On our calculator screen we can now see that the chi-squared statistic is right here, it's 11.5876, and so rounding that to three significant figures, I'll go ahead and write that the chi-squared statistic, so chi-squared stat, is equal to 
11.6. I'll also make a note of the p-value, p-value, which is on the next row here, and it's equal to 0 0.020697. And so rounding that to three significant figures again, I'll say that's equal to 0 0.0207. And in fact, I'll go ahead and box those two results like so. And now another thing worth pointing out here is that on the next row here, we have df and the value 4. And df stands for degrees of freedom. So we can make a note of that as well. And we can go ahead and state that degrees of freedom, df, is equal to 4. The next thing I'll point out here is on the next row, we have exp matrix. And what that's referring to is the matrix which contains the expected frequencies that go alongside this matrix here. And to access it, all we have to do is click on the var button, which is directly above the 9 on our calculator. And if we scroll down a bit, we can see it right here, stat.exp matrix. And so if I click on that, followed by enter, we can quickly make a table of the expected values. And in fact, I'll quickly do that here. And so I copy the same column titles as well as the same row titles. And I'll do that on the side. Let's see. There we go. So my columns are creative followed by analytical, followed by adventurous. And for the rows, we have the different artistic preferences, which were realism, abstract, and pop art. Let's see, pop art, there we go. And so copying the values we see on our calculator screen and rounding them to three significant figures, we can complete this table of expected frequencies as follows. We'll have 7.67, 6.9, 8.14, 43, 6.67, 6, 7.33, 5.67, 5.1, and 6.23. Remember, the expected frequencies correspond to the values we could expect to get if the null hypothesis is indeed correct and our two categorical variables are indeed independent. And the chi-squared statistic that we have down here is essentially a measure of how much the observations we have here deviate from the expected values we have here. And if the chi-squared statistic is too big, in other words, if the observed values we have here deviate or are too different from the expected values, then we'll have to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the two variables we have are associated. And so to figure out whether or not this chi-squared statistic is too big or not, we need to compare it to the critical chi-squared value. And that brings us to step three. In exams, the critical chi-squared value is often given. And if it's not, don't worry, we'll be able to work with the p-value instead of the chi-squared statistic, which I'll be showing you in just a minute or two. But if you're running your own chi-squared test for independence for a research project of yours, then one way of finding the critical chi-squared value is with a table of critical chi-squared values. And you can see a typical one on the screen right now. And to figure out what the critical chi-squared value is from this table, we need two things. First of all, we need the degrees of freedom. And that's the value we made a note of earlier on. Indeed, degrees of freedom is equal to 4. And so I'll quickly remind us of that fact right here. The degrees of freedom here is equal to 4, which we found with the calculator, but we could have also found using the fact that the number of degrees of freedom is equal to the number of rows minus 1, so that would be 3 minus 1, which is 2, times the number of columns minus 1. So that would have been 3 minus 1 as well, which again is 2. So the degrees of freedom would have been 2 times 2, which is just 4. The second thing we'll need to find our critical chi-squared value is the significance level with which we're running our chi-squared test. And in fact, I'll quickly write that, significance level. And the significance level is usually referred to with the Greek letter alpha, and the most common significance levels we'll come across will be 10%, 5%, and 1%. Now, a quick word on significance levels. Put simply, the significance level we choose tells us the probability that we make an incorrect conclusion to our chi-squared test. More specifically, the significance level we choose is a probability that we decide is acceptable of making a type 1 error. And a type 1 error means rejecting the null hypothesis when it was in fact true. And for most practical cases, the significance level that we end up choosing will be 
which as a decimal is 0 0.05. And so now that we've established that our degrees of freedom are equal to 4, and that our significance level is 5% or 0 0.05, we're ready to find the critical chi-squared value from our table. Indeed, the column to the far left-hand side of this table, with the name df at the very top of it, allows us to select the correct row in our table. So in our case, our df is equal to 4, so we go to that row. Next, since the significance level we've chosen is 0 0.05, we go to that column. And so we can see that the critical chi-squared value we should be working with is 9.49. And so I make a note of that, our critical chi-squared value, which I write with a little crit underneath there, crit for critical, is equal to 9.49. Now I should say, if ever you don't like the idea of working with that table of critical chi-squared values, do know that you can also find this critical chi-squared value with your TI Inspire CX. And let me quickly show you how we can do that. So to find this critical chi-squared value with our calculator, again, I start by making a note of the same two things, so degrees of freedom 4 and significance level 0.05. On my calculator, I go ahead and click on Menu, followed by the fifth option, Probability, followed by the fifth option, Distributions, followed by the ninth option, Inverse Chi-squared. And so I click on that. And I'm then prompted to enter an area. And without going into the details of probability distributions, what I'll tell you is that the area, area, is equal to 1 minus 0 0.05. In other words, the area is equal to 1 minus our significance level. And 1 minus 0 0.05, well, that's equal to 0 0.95. And so I enter that as my area, 0 0.95. Next, I enter the degrees of freedom, which we said was 4, so I type 4. And I'm happy with all of that, so I click on OK. And we're done. We can see on our calculator screen that the critical chi-squared value is 9.48773, which rounded to three significant figures, is indeed 9.49. So that's a nice little thing to know as well. That being said, I carry on and move on to the fourth and final step, step four, in which we compare our chi-squared statistic to the critical chi-squared value to draw our conclusion. And put simply, if our chi-squared statistic is greater than the critical chi-squared value, then we reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis. And I'm sure you can appreciate that 11.6 is greater than 9.49. And so consequently, our chi-squared statistic, chi-squared stat, is greater than the critical chi-squared value. And so we reject the null hypothesis, reject h sub 0. And so in context here, we could say that there's sufficient statistical evidence to reject the null hypothesis and state that personality styles and artistic preference are not independent, in other words, they are associated. And I'll write all of that down nicely in just a minute, but first let me point out that rather than working with the chi-squared statistic and the critical chi-squared value, since our calculator gives us the p-value that we have here, another way of drawing our conclusion is to compare the p-value we have to the significance level we've chosen or that we've been given in an exam. And put simply, if the p-value we get is smaller than the significance level, then we reject the null hypothesis. And so I'll write that underneath here and I'll say, or we could have said that the p-value, p-value, is less than the significance level. Indeed, 0 0.0207 is less than 0 0.05. And so we'd reject the null hypothesis. There we go. Reject h sub 0. And just to be clear, you do not have to do both of these. To draw the conclusion, you'll work with one or the other. And rest assured, it's not possible for the chi-squared statistic to be greater than the critical chi-squared value without the p-value being less than the significance level. In other words, these two statements are completely equivalent. So you only have to make one of these two statements. That being said, though, I'll go ahead and box that final result. There we go. Okay, now as I said I would, at the bottom of the screen here I'll quickly write down the conclusion in a more formal way, and so I'll go ahead and write that the chi-squared statistic is greater than the critical chi-squared value. There is therefore sufficient statistical evidence to reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis.
personality styles, and artistic preference are associated. And there we have it. There we go, everyone. I really hope that helped. And if it did, please hit like on this video, drop a comment down below, and even subscribe to this channel to help get this video to as many students as possible. All that being said and done, that's it for this tutorial.